Australia has now reached a historic milestone. The Royal Australian Air Force has inducted all 72 of its F-35A Lightning II fighters. For Canberra, this marks the completion of a decade-long procurement program intended to provide the backbone of its combat aviation force. Yet as these aircraft become fully operational, the obvious question arises. How do they compare to China's J-20 Mighty Dragon, a stealth fighter already deployed in significant numbers across the Indo-Pacific? More than a contest of aircraft specifications, this comparison reflects a clash of doctrines, networks, and strategic ambitions between AUKUS and the People's Liberation Army. The F-35A, as operated by Australia, is not just another fighter. It is designed as a stealth, multi-role platform optimized for networked warfare, sensor fusion, and survivability in high-threat environments. Its radar cross-section is among the lowest ever fielded, especially from the frontal aspect, and the AN-APG-81 Active Electronically Scanned Array Radar remains one of the most capable fighter radars in service. The aircraft integrates the distributed aperture system, electro-optical targeting system, and advanced data links such as Link-16, giving pilots unparalleled situational awareness. Crucially, in AUKUS doctrine, the F-35 is not meant to fight alone, but is part of a larger combat web involving Wedgetail Airborne Early Warning Aircraft, Hobart-class destroyers equipped with Aegis, and intelligence from Allied satellites. The J-20, by contrast, embodies China's effort to close the gap with Western fifth-generation technology. First flown in 2011 and declared operational around 2017, the J-20 is now believed to be fielded in over 200 units, with numbers rising rapidly. It features a large airframe, canards for maneuverability, and a stealth shaping focused primarily on the frontal hemisphere. The Chinese fighter uses indigenous AESA radars and may incorporate L-band arrays in the wings to detect stealthy targets. Yet significant uncertainties remain regarding its true radar cross-section, its ability to maintain stealth in operational conditions, and the maturity of its avionics. While Chinese state media portray the J-20 as equal or superior to the F-35, independent assessments remain cautious. One of the central differentiators lies in propulsion. Australia's F-35As use the Pratt & Whitney F-135 turbofan, generating around 191 kN of thrust. This engine delivers excellent performance but lacks super cruise capability, meaning the F-35 cannot sustain supersonic speeds without afterburners. In practice, stealth and advanced sensors are expected to allow it to avoid close combat and deliver first look, first shot advantages. The J-20, however, is currently in transition. Early models relied on Russian AL-31 engines, but newer batches are reportedly using the Chinese WS-15, claimed to provide super cruise and higher thrust-to-weight ratios. If the WS-15 proves reliable, the J-20 could have a performance edge in speed and altitude. That said, propulsion has long been a weak point of Chinese aerospace, and until the WS-15 is proven in large-scale operations, caution is warranted. Weapons further complicate the comparison. Australia's F-35As carry the AIM-120D AMRAAM with a range of roughly 160 kilometers, alongside the M9X for close combat. Plans are underway for the AM-260 Joint Advanced Tactical Missile to be integrated later this decade, potentially matching or exceeding adversary ranges. The J-20 is armed with the PL-15 Beyond Visual Range Missile, which Chinese sources claim can reach up to 200 or even 300 kilometers thanks to an advanced propulsion system. 
Whether these ranges are realistic under combat conditions is debated, but even conservative estimates suggest the PL-15 currently outranges the AIM-120D. In theory, this would give the J-20 a first-shot advantage. Yet missile performance is only one part of the equation. Guidance, data link reliability, and integration with supporting assets determine whether that range is usable. Here again, Australia leans on the AUKUS network, which provides targeting data from Wedgetail's Poseidon Patrol aircraft and allied ships. This leads to the heart of the matter. Neither the F-35A nor the J-20 will fight in isolation. The F-35's defining feature is its integration into a networked battle space. Australian pilots will not only see what their own sensors detect, but also share and receive information from American, British, and allied systems. In this sense, the F-35 is as much a flying node in an information grid as it is a fighter. China has developed its own combat networks, pairing the J-20 with KJ-500 airborne early warning platforms, the Beidou satellite navigation system, and stealthy drones, such as the GJ-11 Sharpsword. The contest is thus not aircraft versus aircraft, but network versus network. The side that achieves a more resilient, survivable, and integrated sensor shooter chain is likely to prevail. Geography further frames the strategic picture. Australia's 72 F-35As are based primarily at Williamtown and Tyndall, covering northern approaches and enabling deployments across the Indo-Pacific. Their mission is to provide a shield for Australian and allied forces, extending deterrence into maritime choke points. China's J-20s, on the other hand, operate from extensive bases along its eastern seaboard with ready access to the South China Sea and Taiwan Strait. In a conflict scenario, J-20s would seek to push beyond the first island chain, challenging allied air power and threatening naval task forces. For Australia, the risk is clear. If J-20s gain air dominance, they could undermine Allied operations and expose Australian bases. Conversely, if the F-35 maintains its stealth advantage and exploits the AUKUS combat web, it can deny China uncontested skies. So where does this leave Australia? The induction of the full fleet of 72 F-35As is a significant achievement. It means that, at least numerically, Canberra has met its original goal of equipping three operational squadrons. In qualitative terms, the F-35 remains one of the most advanced fighters in the world, battle-tested and supported by a vast allied ecosystem. But the J-20 is not a paper tiger. If China succeeds in fielding reliable WS-15 engines and fully operational PL-15 missiles, the mighty dragon could pose a formidable threat. Numbers also matter. By the early 2030s, China may deploy several hundred J-20s, far outpacing Australia's 72. Ultimately, the question F-35A versus J-20 cannot be reduced to a dogfight scenario. It is about systems, doctrine, and alliances. The F-35A embodies AUKUS's approach, a high-end stealth aircraft embedded in a broader combat architecture, reliant on integration with the United States and the United Kingdom. The J-20 represents China's bid for indigenous fifth-generation capability, seeking to deny adversaries the ability to operate near its shores and project power outward. For Australia, success depends less on the individual performance of its 72 aircraft and more on sustaining and expanding the AUKUS network. Ensuring access to next-generation munitions and integrating future technologies such as unmanned systems like the Ghost Bat and Ghost Shark. As of today, the balance remains in Australia's favour in terms of proven stealth, operational integration and allied support. 
Yet the margin is not guaranteed. If China's technological leap with the WS-15 and PL-15 becomes reality, the J-20 could erode that advantage. The Indo-Pacific skies, therefore, are not just an arena for two stealth fighters, but a testing ground for two strategic visions. One is multinational, networked, and heavily reliant on alliances. The other is national, centralized, and driven by rapid military modernization. Which will prevail remains uncertain. But one thing is clear. Australia's 72 F-35As will stand at the front line of that competition. And so the question remains for viewers. If conflict erupts over the Indo-Pacific, will the F-35A's proven stealth and allied network outweigh the J-20's growing numbers and extended range missiles? Leave your thoughts in the comments and subscribe for more in-depth analysis of how Australia, AUKUS, and their adversaries are shaping the future of air combat.